come. Walk down the winding path. Don't mind the spooks and monsters. They stay hidden within the trees. There are mysteries in this world that you need to know, and paranormal truths that need to be told. Come, step up into the caravan, where we share tales of old, as well as new accounts about things you thought only existed in your nightmares. Special shout out to our patrons Jose, Frater Mutata in Lumine, Victoria, Kadrick, and Donna. Thank you. Okay, well, hello everyone, and welcome back inside the caravan. Joining us on this episode is Patty Negri, who many of you may know from Ghost Adventures. Patty is a psychic medium who has been practicing natural magic all her life. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on. This is great. Yeah, we're super yes, excited. Yes, we're so to excited you. that you could be here. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say really quickly before we really get going is that um, thank you for writing the intro to the feminine macabre. It's so awesome that you're it, a part of this. Yes, honored to be a part of it. It's like, <laughs> yes, women, we need more women. My God. Yeah. <laughs> so just truly honored to 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 be a part of it. So yeah. So that's awesome. I just, I, yeah, I just started reading it. <laughs> I just got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, I have a piece in there on um, the cursed objects associated oh, nice. with the bell, Witch cave. Nice. Um, so, and I know lady Anne was super excited when I told her that you were writing the forward for it. She was all on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I thought that that was awesome. Um, for those of our listeners who don't know about the book, could you share a little bit about it, Heather? So the Feminine Macabre is um, it's a women's journal of all things strange and unusual. Um, and Spook Eats um, is the the name of well, Amanda's name. She put, put this <laughs> out. And actually, there there's an opening for uh, submissions for volume two right now. This was the first volume for this all-female paranormal strange high strangeness journal um there are 30 women included in there and um i think she said based on the onslaught of entries she has already that this next volume is going to be even larger so wow. yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty impressive and it's it's sitting at over 300 pages right now the volume one so nice. i can only imagine what volume two is going to look like the old fashioned encyclopedia. There you go. We need yeah. old, we don't have good old big books anymore. <laughs> yes, I love exactly. it. Love it. <laughs> uh, no, I think it is great and great that she did that and she's bringing out the feminine. We're trying to do that with Paraflix too, trying to get more women to submit anything films, shorts, mm -hmm. television programs. We just need to be better represented. Yeah, no, that's really true. And I have definitely been loving Paraflix. I ended up watching Portraits. Oh. That was the very first one that I watched. And I adored that. I I loved you in it. That was fantastic. <laughs> my little, my and, three minutes, um, my cameo. Yeah. <laughs> um, I yes, loved it. No, I, I loved it. It was so good. Thanks. I, it's so pretty. And I love it. Again, it was a woman written, woman directed. Mm -hmm. and and just every it's just to me it's just every film is so pretty I mean every shot is so pretty yes. it's, it's an art piece in itself it really is it really is I loved every minute of it and I found myself wishing for more something else like that but you really don't find that stuff very often no, so no. we're all working on it mm -hmm. right right and here we are <laughs> women <laughs> exactly oh my gosh exactly um and then as we're as we're also mentioning Paraflex, I wanted to also mention the Haunted Diary. You are a teacher over there. Yes, and I am. And I was wondering if you could tell our listeners what kind of classes have you already taught and do you have any upcoming? Yes, I have lots of upcoming. I teach a little bit of everything. Um, I teach um, 
kind of basic magical practice. It's very simplified of everything. I teach uh, mm-hmm. psychic development. I teach psychic protection. I teach really simple, simple tarot. I'm not like an in-depth class. It's like you're going to get it an hour and a half. You right. know, hacks along the way. I teach things from my book, Old World Magic for the Modern World, kind of just that tips and tricks and techniques to help day-to-day life stuff. I practical magic classes, how to clear your house classes, love classes, weight and health classes. Uh, again, all from a both a practical, easy. You don't have to go out and find, you know, you know, I have newt anywhere to do things. <laughs> you don't have to have special right. powers. Um, but you know, and just getting us back in touch because working with people um, for decades, like I've done my one-on-one things, what I notice is that number one, we are amazing. Humans are amazing. We are these divine creatures that have free will. So we're superpowers, but we, we forget it or we don't know, or it's all got taught out of us. We're, or, we're all like, we've given away our power. So my mm-hmm. whole gig, yes. whatever my psychic side, my medium side, my ghost wrangler on TV side, my witchy side <laughs> is really just about reminding people how amazing we are that we give away our power to other people. We give away our power to limiting belief systems, whether what we're brought up with or religious or just personal creation. We give away our power to fear. We give, a, it's just like, mm. just tweak it and you get it back. You get it back in, in bundles and then you create yes. the life you want. So all my teaching, whatever it is, if it looks all mystical and magical divination, divination tools, uh, it, it's really all leading to the just, just, you know, it's really easy to be your best you. Right. Right. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. Now, um, a, a question that I have is that, do you believe that everyone has the ability to tap into all the Claire senses? And do you think that some of us are born with one that is more dominant than the others? Yes, I, I guess. And yes, I do think I think we're born with it, that 90% of our brain that we don't use that we haven't figured out yet, but it's really, really has got taught out of us. Our modern Western society is the least mystical, magical. I mean, even our religion isn't very mystical or magical anymore. It's it's like, oh, that's your imaginary friend. No, it's not. Uh, yes. you know, no, it's <laughs> not. It's, I've got the information on what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, we are mm-hmm. just we, we, we prize all things left brain, you know, even taking art out of schools, even taking, so left mm-hmm. and logical yes. brain. Yes, we need that. That gets us through life. That pays our bills. That pays everything that we do. But that right creative brain, there, that's where you're going to get your clairs. That's where you're going to be able to talk to mm-hmm. spirits and communicate with the fake, you know, all those magical things. But this, the left brain will shut it down. You have to learn to dance between. Because if you go, wow, grandma's standing behind me, and then you go, oh, that doesn't make sense. Grandma's there. Bah, bah, bah. Somebody open the window. It's like, yep. I, I, you just shut it down. So just say yes. Okay, it's grandma. If you want to analyze it, wait two hours. Was that grandma or was that indigestion? Fine. But the more you say yes, and the more you try <laughs> right. not to fall into logic, like in the craft, we would like lay down our broom. There's a thing on this side is where the logical world lives. And over here is where rules don't count. Gravity doesn't matter. Spirits exist. Magic. We could do ma- everything. And the more you can divide those two, um, the the better, stronger both get. I do think we probably have dominant. I'm, it's really easy to test your dominant clairs, clairvoyant, clairaudient, because mm-hmm. there's seeing, smelling, tasting, hearing, knowing, feeling, and they're all slightly different and valid. And even on the seeing people, I see, sometimes you see in front of you, I see a shadow figure with a big hat. Or sometimes you see it inside your head. I see a shadow. Figure. Both are valid. Mm-hmm. The same with smelling and hearing or knowing or feeling or tasting. Um, you Really easy. You could test yourself. And I do this in class all the time. Like, even right now, like everybody, wherever you're standing, wherever you're looking, look around your room. Like slowly do a 360 or 180 each way with, scan your room, scan your room, scan your room, scan your room, scan your room. And then you do it to both sides. And then I have people close their eyes and then I have them describe or look or go back to to remember what they saw or felt. Some people are going to be very visual about it. Some people are going to be coming from an emotional place. Some people are going to almost, it's, you're going to, your, your power, more powerful things are going to 
kind of stand out with just, un, you know, when you're not thinking about it and you've scanned the room, is it a knowing? Is it a feeling? Is it a literal seeing? Is it? Right. It's, it's pretty easy. And I think they all can be developed just like, and by anybody, I do think people have different, stronger gifts than others. Just like mm -hmm. everybody can take piano lessons. Anybody can learn to play the <laughs> piano. Not everyone is going to be a concert pianist. I'm one. No study piano for three right. years. I can read <laughs> music. I could play love is blue and Guantanamera. That shows how long ago I took it. I could, but I, there, there is not a single iota in me that's going to, you know, put me on a concert stage. Um, right. <laughs> it's good that I've learned to do it. And if everybody learns, you know, to, to read their music, again, it just gets us back in touch. That numbness that we got is whether you want to be a clairvoyant or talk to dead people or talk to spirits, it gets us in touch with ourselves that we've numbed out to. I, I right. really think that that's even what the pandemic was about. It's like, wake up. We had to get hit on the head with a two by four and literally sent to our room to, to, to figure it all out. And we, yes. we use the terms asleep at the wheel, by road, mm. automatic pilot, phoned in. It's like, ah. Yeah. So that's why my little magical, very elemental, very basic follow moon cycles, guys. You know, we are almost 60% right. water. You were, it's not just the crazy full moon, like, They'll tell you at the police station or the hospital. It's every moon. So if, if we mm -hmm. tune into that and the two weeks the moon is waxing, we're consciously adding into our life more money. Ask for a raise then. Do whatever. The two weeks the moon is waning. Let go. That's when you start the diet. That's when you quit smoking. The full mm -hmm. moon get out in mm -hmm. gratitude. The new moon, you know, and ask for what you want. The new moon, the dark moon, that's when you go inside and contemplate. You know, whether you're doing some official spell working or you're just living that day to day, all of a sudden, the good stuff in your life gets better, faster and faster. The not good or bad, but the stuff you don't need anymore starts falling away with grace and ease because mm. you've tapped into your tides. That 60% water. Easy, easy. Anybody can do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's wonderful. That's perfect. I love that so much. Um, so do you have a moment within all of the spirituality, all of the, everything that you've done, do you have a moment that was the most powerful to you that you'd be willing to share? I think, um, I think, uh, yeah, I think the one that, and, and this is a story I've told before, but the one that showed both saying you're going to get the sensationalism of like, what the, and the magic <laughs> of the proof of what magic works. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's my little spontaneous combustion story. Um, oh, wow. I, I've been doing seances since I was seven or eight. Again, I've been talking to dead people since I was, I could talk. I did my first seance at seven or eight in my little suburban home. I didn't even really know what it was. I just came up with my first chant, how to lift the veil, how to talk to dead people. Oh, wait, I don't know dead people. Okay, Marilyn Monroe. And if, I don't know anybody, a seven or eight year old, why I knew Marilyn, I don't know. Um, John Kennedy, I, all the people. And so I've been doing these for decades, literally. So, um, so I was doing a seance. There's a house in my neighborhood. I live in the Hollywood Hills, an old one of the first movie enclaves built in the 1920s, my house in 1920. Um, well, this is one of the movie star houses built by Charlie Chaplin for his one of his many girlfriends, Mary Astor, who was an old a movie star too. She was a, a, a film star. And it was a party house. Party. It was a super party house, the 20s, 30s, 40s, and uh, crazy decadent party house. In the 60s, the Rolling Stones manager bought it. And it was a party house. The Rolling Stones stayed there. The Mamas and Papas, Graham Parson. Uh, then they, whatever, they, all these musicians stayed there. And then they moved out. And then the person who invented the real life sex doll moved in. And he lived there. Different kind of party. And then and then he moved out and Marilyn, Man <laughs> and Marilyn Manson moved in and was my neighbor for seven years. So and he recorded there. He So the house is never going to have a family of four. <laughs> it's lovely. It's it, the house is, it looks almost like it was built by a sacred jump, like a Mason or something. It's like, Oh, look at oh, the wow. four level spiral staircase. Oh, look exactly 12 panels in this. Oh, look, wow. there's literally a compass painted in the hardwood floor. Ooh, oh, the wow. blinds are, it's like a magic house. Um, <laughs> obviously attracted creative people. So anyway, I was brought in to do a seance. Um, 
to they were doing a thing calling at the Mary Astor house about this crazy house that the neighbors had talked about forever. And so um, I was doing a seance and there was very much young people at the table that just post puberty, before you get too far in your 20s, your life force is so strong. That's when stuff happens. Mm -hmm. Always. I teach, I speak at mm -hmm. colleges a lot. It's like, whoa, because your life force and you haven't got it all <laughs> you know, organized yet you know, as you do it right. farther into your twenties. So that's when paranormal stuff and magical stuff. So I had a table full of these really young people in this kind of crazy, chaotic, powerful house and the, and four cameras going, that's great. Cause we're shooting a documentary and this one wow. kid, it got kind of smart alecky. Cause I do say, I go, it's okay to be skeptic, try to be open for your own sake, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the one thing right. I do ask is you have to be respectful. Because you either believe oh, yeah. or not, it's real. So you have to be respectful. But this one mm -hmm. kid was just, maybe because he was on TV, maybe because he was just a smart aleck kid. So he was starting to say things that were really upsetting this one spirit. There were three major spirits there. None of them demonic. Uh -huh. Demons get way too much credit. 99% of what people call <laughs> demons are just cranky ass ghosts. No, it's just yeah. <laughs> big in life, big in death. When you're in Hollywood, you're going to get big personalities, not Bob the Banker and but anyway, this one spirit was getting <laughs> agitated and this kid kept doing it. So at first it got to a point, all of a sudden he said something horrible. The French doors flew open, everybody screaming, screaming. And I'm like, oh, the producer side of me is going, wow, that's like special effects. Timing it wouldn't be fake. I, I would never, ever fake anything. Again, my reputation depends on it. But every screen right. close the French doors. I go, wow, okay, they're serious. As long as he said something else stupid again, it happened again. The French doors flew open all on camera. It's like screaming, screaming, close them up. Okay. I'm trying to keep a, a control on the energy the way I do. And then all of a sudden he said something else stupid. And the speakers, you know, old school speakers, you stick them on the floor. How big can your speakers be? <laughs> The opposite of mm -hmm. now how little can your speakers be um <laughs> uh, but the speakers came on on the floor of this <sighs> right next to this old-fashioned radio oh. like white noise sounding like a spirit box like <sighs> that happened twice we looked later it wasn't even plugged in but anyway this thing is wow. building this thing is building we're using a ouija board i'm a ouija believer you just have to know how to use it Yes, yes. You just have to know <laughs> yes. how to use it. You know, exactly. don't ask anybody in, anybody out there, really? You're going to let anybody into your house? Yeah, I maybe mean, should be a little picky. Be a little picky. But anyway, we were using it and getting this really good information about stuff that had happened in the dirt basement. It's like, it's always the dirt basement. That's where Marilyn recorded and all this stuff. So anyway, he said something really stupid again. All of a sudden, not him, but one of the cameramen facing him, the skeptic of the group, super skeptic, facing him, burst into flames, burst up his back, oh, wow. a V of fire, up his back, like angel wings oh. of fire. It wasn't in front of a fireplace or anything. Everybody's screaming. Two cameras actually caught it. One camera, like, hit the feet, ceiling, hit the floor. I, I guess you do test wow. the ability of a cameraman by the room bursting into flames. <laughs> His camera, he's facing the other way. He's sitting there wondering why people are screaming and pointing at him as he's his shirt is burning off him on the back and it burned off him wow. like like it was a polyester or nylon it was a cotton it should not have right. went poof like that and all of a sudden wow. cool witch medium patty becomes medic patty of which i am i'm an emt i'm like drop and roll drop and roll and i'm calling in my wards and guardians <laughs> right. to shut this down shut this down i am sorry seance is over i don't care what we're doing you know, nobody bursts into flames on my watch. Not okay. Right. Not okay. <laughs> ah, and I'm rolling him around, every screaming. But the cameraman, he, he was very inspired by this. All of a sudden, he's a believer. He's like, no, I'm okay. I'm, as I'm watching the blistering on his back. I, I, wow. I, no, no. He goes, no, really. I have a sweater. He took off the burnt shirt. He's like, I'm fine, really. I talked to the spirit as much as you could i'm like we're not even going to get yeah. rid of it at the end usually i shut it down the guys who live here don't want it so mm -hmm. the, the spirit sort of agreed the kid was no longer going to be any problem at all he became the, <laughs> you know the choir boy in the corner yeah. like, what so um <laughs> we continued the seance crazy stuff happened glass flew out of the cupboard they did try to push laurent the cameraman kind of why does my phone it's all turned off it keeps singing I haunted everything. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw it in a drawer. Um, I had death in the So anyway, so we finished the seance. We got information. Um, it, it it was just crazy night. But the crazy thing was, three weeks later, 
he showed me, Lauren, the cameraman, he showed me my back. He goes, look at my back. And I swear, it looked like he had went and got a tattoo of a dragon. Open Whoa. where the blister went. Open mouth, sharp teeth, winged Whoa. head into the shape of a serpent. Oh. That is the exact energy I called in to shut down the seance. I work dragon energy. Wow. I work dragon magic. I have dragons everywhere. Look at that. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm like, <laughs> that is, that's the guardians wow. I had put their crossroads magic. I, I'm like, oh my God, you have a tramp stamp of a dragon <laughs> on your back. That is like the coolest thing I have ever seen. So oh my God. Um, he was, he was so inspired. He actually... He wrote, and that just like, yes, this is such confirmation. This, ah, he was so inspired. He actually wrote a horror film um, with, wow. with a, about this TV psychic who does every TV show basically about me, every, you know, and doing yet another reality show about me. And then, oh, a portal opens and then hell breaks loose and becomes a horror film. Um, he wrote it wow. with Stephen Norrington, the guy who wrote League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and the oh, Blade wow. series. Um, and they haven't done it yet. I hope they do it. But I actually sat down with them with the script five hours, my dining room table. I'm like, Lauren, you can't say that on camera. You can't say that. He goes, you said it. I go, I know I said it. That opens a veil. You can't say that. You don't <laughs> want to be one of those cursed horror films, do you? That's what oh. happens. Spirits, ghosts, energy don't know the difference of TV movies versus reality. That's right. what happens with all those like exorcists and films. They really open portals and don't mm. know how to deal with it. And they don't have somebody there who knows how to handle it. So if it ever does get down, we've taken out all the words that really could cause something and made them very, mm. you know, mundane right. things that sound good. But, you know, all the actors won't die after playing. <laughs> the film. So right. I think that would be my most I mean I haven't topped that one I've had some insane stuff between ghost adventures and then just my this is what I do now going out right uh, but th th my only spontaneous combustion and, and hopefully last but that was one wow. that again both showed the power of spirit and the power of mm -hmm. our control over spirit working with our guides whether whatever side of the veil I still firmly believe and I have since I was a kid that this is our realm of existence. The other side really does have to play by our rules. And people don't know right. that. So they give their power away. They, when you see somebody mm. all possessed on TV, mm. well, even if it's me, we've, you've given that over. Um, right. And people don't, because they don't know better. You know, unless you have a severe addiction problem, that's a different story. Or a severe mental mm -hmm. imbalance, that's a different story. You, you just claim it in the name of whatever, whoever you believe in. And, and we have the power, but nobody knows that yeah wow um so yeah. i i was muted but i did have a good laugh when you said that demons get too much credit <laughs> Don't they? And, oh my god uh and i wanted to ask you about that specifically um because that is something that it's like a hot a hot topic i guess that you know i'm out ghost hunting and it, it was a demon that i ran into or something like what why do you think that has become such a popular thing and in your experience you know what is the difference like between a, a spirit with a bad attitude uh that's grumpy and just wants to scare you and let it be let it be known that it's there and an actual like demonic type entity um I, well, I think it's a very, very, very big difference. And like I said, most of the time, it's just a cranky ghost or a cranky elemental or a cranky whatever that, or a wannabe. There's so many wannabe. It's like, just like the bully <laughs> kid on the, on the, on the school yard is all these like, oh, it's a demon. Yeah, I'm a demon. They call me a demon. That's what I picture them like, <laughs> I'm a demon now. You know, and I think it, that's gotten um, mostly because of TV, I think. I mean, my guys, the, the, it's like in search of the demon. It, it's, it just right. isn't so romantic to go in search of the grumpy ghost, you know. <laughs> That's true. And so, to, um, and they're always looking for the dark, sadly, because that's what we want to see. Humans watch the news watch anything it's not the good news we're going to see we want right. to the first thing is how many people died in the house what's going on it's, for whatever reason that's just our little quirky humanness um right. and i think that's honestly all it is it's to dress it up as a demon because demons are scary demons are mm -hmm. scarier than cranky ghosts or and there's powerful different levels of everything <laughs> just like different there's powerful people and weak people 
there's right. the same thing with with spirits on the other side but i think mm-hmm. again i think if it really is something that is so de- demonic you're not going to be questioning it you know right, it, right. you're not going to be questioning it and so many people who have serious like they go demonic attachments you're not mm. going to be questioning it. You know, you're, they probably put you in the mental hospital. That's it. Right. Y- yes, you can get little attachments along the way. You're being influenced by, you're being this and that, mm. and then that more often than not. But we always take it to the extreme because that's what humans do. Right. It's right. True. You know, I've been curious when it comes to, uh, like, doing an investigation at a haunted location. And there are some people that like to... What, what is it? Uh, like they, they bully, they call out, they're yeah, um, aggressive. Yeah. They like provoke. Provoke. The word. Provoking. Yeah. Yes, that's the word. <laughs> well, yeah. if, if you go in and you provoke, technically then can't you, if, if you go in, let's say I go in first and I provoke and then you go in, don't I leave an energetic signature that has that kind of negative energy. So then when somebody else comes in, then they could be assuming that that is a negative spirit. Yes. And, and, so, and, they've, and they've gotten in a bad mood. If you, I mean, if you walk into right. anything, you walk into a house, you walk into a store and you haven't even talked to somebody yet, you are screaming at there. Are you going to help me here? Or what? Are you going to help me? Are you here? Are you even here? Really? You're going to step back, either yell back or just not even talk. But if you go in, hi, right. is there somebody here? And most of the shows have finally learned that. My guy, Zach has. Mm-hmm. They, they don't provoke anymore, hardly ever, unless there's some really specific. It's interesting, though, because um, I know some a, a Catholic priests still do that, that do exorcism. Oh. They still do the provoke. Because, again, oh, wow. I, everybody a demon for them, I guess. Maybe they think anything right. is sure it is a demon. Just different cosmologies. But, but they still provoke. It's like... I guess maybe because they think everything evil. But again, if you really do want results, if you really do want communication, that that's not the way to go. And and most people are finally right. learning that. And you're hundred percent right. right. Yes, you leave that anger in the room. You leave that provoking in the room. Mm-hmm. So. Can and can an egregore be created from that? So if if I go in and I provoke, I leave the negative energy. You come in, you feel it. You believe it's a negative energy, and then you start telling everybody else that it's negative, and then everybody thinks that it is. Yep, I think. Okay. I think almost. I I don't know percentage wise because I don't sit there and do the math, but a large percentage. Right. I go. I clear houses all the time. I've cleared everything from the Aaron Spelling Mansion, the biggest sit in L.A. I had mm. to get the ghost of Aaron Spelling out of the bedroom so the new owners could. <laughs> and that's weird. <laughs> weird. I'm like. Mr. Lo- he was the guy who you know, produced Love Boat. He was Mr. Producer of the mm. 80s and Fantasy Island. And I'm having right. to banish spirit out of the most expensive house in LA. I've literally had to get out <laughs> the, um, I- I've cleared the Phil Spector murder castle. Uh, where oh, he wow. killed, but, I mean, talk about oozy black things all over this literal castle yeah. in the middle of LA. Um, but honestly, as much as not, what is created in the house is not coming from some ghost or demon or spirit or elemental coming in. It's self-created. Right. Egregores. We anger and fighting and this and doubt and the desire mm. and this and that. We create these spirits. You guys know that, but regular people, I guess, right. apparently just don't know that. They're creating their right. own stuff. And then that becomes a poltergeist, which it became, creates its own stuff, you know? Mm. Right. Right. Now that, that also brings me to another question I had. Is there anywhere, because I know that you you just recently, uh, didn't you go to the Cecil Hotel recently? Yes, I just, yeah. I, well, I did the, the the Ghost Adventures one that aired, it's been airing a month now on the new, disco, the two hour one. That was crazy because Zach, mm-hmm. he does this, he never lets me to know where I'm going. He does it on purpose. Mm-hmm. Like, right. he will tell me what happened to the murder. This was, he called me two weeks before and he said, okay, Patty, I'm going to be in LA in two weeks. I'm going to call you. Okay, nothing, nothing. Two weeks later, it was like, hi, this is Zach. Can you get here in two hours? And I'm a girl. I'm going, ah, <laughs> did I wash my hair today? Do I have time to put on right? <laughs> ah, what? I'm not thinking about, and he gave me an address. I don't even think he said Cecil. It was just kind of like a, uh, so I, I, I'm going downtown and I, you see the Cecil because it's a landmark. I'm like, right. oh, that's that place. That's the little, that's the girl in the water tower. That's all I knew. But mm-hmm. I'm walking up to it. 
uh, and a rat didn't want to let me in. I'd go right, the rat go right, I'd go left. <laughs> it's Skid Row. I'm not afraid of rats. It's like, well, it's either a possessed rat or he's trying to protect me, rat. I don't know. Mm, but I, right. I get in. I get in, and and this energy just starts pounding me in. I I'm still because I allow myself to go into trance state. Right. And then and then Zach and the, the crew shows up. They've already got their cameras strapped on. They go, okay, Patty, you. There's oh, wow. 14 floors. There's 14 floors. There's 700 rooms. They're all open. You tell us where to go. And the human side of me wants to go, what the hell? Oh my God. I don't, I don't. But I just faith. Okay. Right. Go in the elevator. Oh, this is that elevator. Push the button. And I led them right. I don't want to do a spoiler alert, but I, I read them yeah, right, right to a room where Zach thinks I'm jumping out the window. I'm opening the window going, I got to get out of here. I'm in trance. And I'm just kind of going, why is Zach yelling at me? He's never yelled at me yeah. before. Oh, yeah. And I'm in my little trance day and everybody's saying, don't jump. I'm like, what? I just have to get out of here. And I led them right to a room where somebody jumped out. And then I led them to a, another room that all of a sudden I'm being attacked. I'm holding myself like a kid who has to go to the bathroom. Like, don't mm. go there, don't go there. And he's like, yeah. what's happening? What's happening? Where are you being attacked? And the part of me that's still conscious is going, Mm, mm -hmm. how do you say that body part on television uh lady part <laughs> right. girl parts i don't know so um we got all sorts of great stuff that isn't maybe they'll do it that isn't on on that show because you can only do so much in two hours um oh yeah so but i was just but it, but hopefully maybe they'll do an extra show or something because we got some other really great stuff but i just was there again two weeks ago with some youtubers oh that, that elton castille and the tfil crew which are the number one mm -hmm. paranormal it's great. I, I'm hanging out with all these boys. I'm like, literally these 20 something <laughs> kids, me, it's mom running around. Like but they, they rented the whole Tisa hotel too. They actually rented, um, first, the first night we did the, the music suite at the Biltmore. Some of oh, the most wow. amazing stuff I ever got, like a $5,000 night suite. Uh, wow. Most amazing stuff that should be dropping soon to YouTube. Okay. within the next week or so and then they rented the whole cecil hotel too and wow. and youtubers don't have what tv shows have i didn't get to right. go to the roof the two nights i was there with ghost adventures um i'm like can i go to the roof once i'm consciously nope there's not a fire marshal here right now these guys don't have a mm. fire marshal. the youtubers don't have a fire i didn't <laughs> see right. on stuff on the roof i wow. again i can't the stuff that we did under the the shade of the what mm -hmm. the thing is in we did some amazing things and that should they're all going to drop before april 25th i know it could oh, be this wow. week next week but yeah that place is insane the seesaw is just wow i think there's something there i probably created egregore something mm -hmm. out of maybe it was something real that became something it affects right. living people and makes them you know, makes them big, better serial killers than they were with the Richard mm. Ramirez and whatever. Makes people jump out of windows and OD. Right. I mean, it has been a drug place for a long time. That always affects everything. Um, but I think mm -hmm. it affects living people that go there. And it, I think it also right. is holding a bunch of spirits in there. A bunch mm. of spirits. Yeah, that would make sense. That would make sense. Yeah. Now, is there anywhere that you have been that you will never, ever go again? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't think so. I like challenges. <laughs> I, 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 I want, if anybody had a hobby, mine is to like break the odds challenge. So um, I can't think of anywhere I wouldn't go. No, yeah. I would, I would be well warded, well protected. I'd put my, you know, titanium magic suit of whatever on, but. Right. Is there a place then that's like the biggest challenge so far that you want to have another shot at investigating? Um, I, I would love, cause I've got a beef against him now, the Black Dahlia house. Mm. I, I, I've done two seances there. One was years ago, a non paranormal show, but I was doing a seance, a real estate show, which was funny because they don't know how to deal. It's like, why did our camera batteries drain? I'm like, <laughs> get used to it. Um, mm -hmm. But it, with with that Dr. George Hodel, who's the doctor who lived there, he definitely did it. He cut up these women. He hates women, hates people, horrible. And then I did mm. a, I did a ghost adventures there too. And we actually did cross over a girl on ghost adventures. Again, you won't see mm. it. That would be cutting room floor because, but it was right. amazing with Anna Hodel. We had not Elizabeth Short, but another girl. We did mm -hmm. that go to the Lake Carolyn, the whole thing with Zach, F. Aaron, with Anna Hodel, the whole thing. It was amazing. But he's 
that doctor is evil and he's been created into something much bigger than just a dead serial killer doctor. Cause I would, mm. and my beef, and I would love to get back there is I was doing something a year ago, I guess, um, an earlier version of my podcast and it was kind of a seance and crime thing. So I had associated press mm. reporter, came up, a crime reporter, Linda Deutsch, most famous lady. She got famous on Charles Manson and OJ Simpson and Michael, J all that. She was the face of associated press. Um, we were right. going to do a thing on the black Dahlia and my then producer who quit the next day, my then producer, oh. we were getting setting up for this seance and we we're going to do the George Hodel and figure out black Dahlia stuff. Um, mm -hmm. my producer, she, before anybody got over, she goes, she wanted to pull out the Ouija board. Cause she had a friend she talked to all the time, just like texting. It was that easy. Mm -hmm. I, I was got lazy. I broke all my own rules. I didn't set up my wards. I didn't set up my protection. Mm -hmm. I didn't open up the board correctly. And so we were thought we were talking to her friend. All of a sudden I got slammed into the back of my dining room chair. I hear this crack, 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 and nobody behind me. And I, I'm like sliding down to the floor and she's going, Patty, are you okay? I'm like, uh, uh, no, I'm not. And I, I always say I'm fine. Really. I could have my entire right. arm cut off. I'm like, it's fine. It's a flesh wound. <laughs> right. Uh, and I'm like, uh, uh, I had to go to urgent care. I thought I had broke wow. my ribs, but instead of broken ribs, he, he had hit me with such hard force that it ripped all the cartilage off my floating ribs. It, I, wow. I was in severe pain for like months in my own wow. dining room. I allowed that in my own friggin' dining room, which is just so against everything that I do in my warded house. And my, right. So, so I would love to get back in there. And yeah. well, I even, you know, Oh, please go ahead. No, no. I said the, the guy who owned it, I don't know. It's been for sale forever. Maybe it finally sold. I don't know. I haven't been following it, but I was like, you know why it won't sell because people walk in and it's icky as beautiful as it is if you oh. i go i could clear it a lot of people could clear it but if you really want to sell it you should let somebody clear it you're not selling it on it's a haunted thing you sell it out for mostly regular movies but right you didn't care so but wow but anyway you were saying wow well, no, I was just going to say, you know, sometimes those things happen. I mean, you know, I I went with Heather for my very first time uh, ever doing a uh, investigation. And I don't know. I mean, yes, am I sensitive? Yeah, I've experienced things since I was a child. But I guess part of me didn't fully believe that anything was really going to happen that night. And everybody was in the entry and I was like, well, can, can I go walk around? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, go ahead. And I, I mean, I granted, I had warned everybody that I might, you know, just kind of wander off because sometimes you just get in this weird, I don't know, trance and then you just go. So I, I went myself downstairs uh, right by, a, it was like the Morgan doctor's office area. And I, I really legitimately felt somebody touch the back of my head. It was like their hand, their fingers were in my hair. And I, I shot up all the steps and I ran down the hallway and I, I was just like <laughs> shocked. And, but then later, <laughs> uh, after I had calmed down, I kind of just thought, you know what, I, that's not going to happen again. Like what's the chances of it happening again and so i i walked off by myself again in this big place but nothing really crazy did happen after that but then as i have been going to more classes and studying this stuff more now i realize what a position i actually put myself in yeah so yeah and yeah. um yeah they need they need to and I'm going to start, I've been working on it because I do teach lots of psychic protection classes. I need, mm -hmm. do you, you know, Kedrick Olson, oh, beautiful man. Yeah, you, of course. Kedrick, he, he has really put together beautiful psychic protection for paranormal investigators because they need it. Mm -hmm. And so many of them don't even have any kind of a spiritual or magical bent. They're just a bunch of people right. who want to go out and talk to ghosts. So they really need it. So I want yes. to start working his method or the stuff that I put together, start doing it. And he needs to get it out at Paracons and stuff because mm -hmm. you're opening up a big door. You're opening up a big veil and people don't 
don't know who or what they're going to call if they get into trouble. I mean, a billion things work, work within your own belief system or cosmology, but have something that you're going to do. Oh, yeah. No, I had spoke to him after her and I got home and he he has this there's like a meditation that he does that helps with clearing all of that because her and I had definitely dealt with it was yeah. a really bad headache. I think it was her and I and some of the other uh, members. Heather, I don't remember how long that headache lasted, though, but I know that we were drained. Yeah, it lasted a couple of days. Um, I've I, It's been interesting that what I've noticed is a few different places that I've been to, the feeling afterwards can be completely different. And it's not necessarily even tied to the amount of activity that we had in, in the evening. There's one place... Uh, Madison Seminary that I've gone to a handful of times. And every time I leave there, regardless of how much has happened, for days afterwards, I just am drained. Um, I'm drained when we leave. Um, yeah. But then the most recent place that I went to was the historic Licking County Jail around Columbus, Ohio. And um, all kinds of stuff happened. It was really active. And I left energized. I had no hangover feeling the next day. I mean, like it wasn't, it was so odd. um, Just the way things feel afterwards. Well, maybe you're learning to do it. I call that a hangover too. I call it ritual hangover, a paranormal hangover because they use your Mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. Um, And so really that little, the biggest portal on our body, right where our head and neck come together, right where that base of the spine, that is the biggest portal. Always put your protection oil there. Put your protect. That is why if you pray, you bow your head to open up for God, spirit gods. People don't get Whoa. that. Whatever you put your protect, your third eye, your palms, the soles of your feet, put it right there, right uh-huh. there. And if you don't have an oil or something to protection, close it up energetically, mm-hmm. seal it energetically, do a sigil or something on it. And then you're going to keep stuff from getting in. And that's also, I think, this, what I call the crown of illumination. This is, mm. you know, you see old fashioned pictures of holy people with like the little halos. This is the powerful area. All of our regular five senses are right here. And our mm. six senses are right there between the third eye right here and that portal at the back that opens up. So this is where spirit can really communicate. So if you kind of protection of that, oh, yeah. but I would say you're just learning how to, to do the energy. I do too. It's like, awesome. oh, I got the hangover from energy, but bringing mm. home headaches, and stuff, that's rough. That means you let something stick in there. So just... Yeah. Really, there's a million ways to do it. Just when you're done with the investigation, you end it, you stop it, you mm-hmm. don't take anything home with you. You clear it out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting that you said that right there. I didn't realize that at the back of the head because a few years ago, um, my husband can sense things. And we had gone to Mansfield Reformatory or Shawshank Prison, uh, where that was where the Shawshank Redemption was filmed. And he was feeling different things and I was getting nothing. Um, even my children were seeing stuff or feeling stuff. And I, I was uh, frustrated at one point because I'm like, how are you guys feeling all this stuff? And I'm not getting anything. And my husband said, you know, walk over here. This is like a wall. This feels like a wall. Walk over here. You got to feel something. And I walked there and I'm like, There's nothing. Now, what I had been noticing was a tingle at the back of my head, at the base of my skull, but I thought that's just me wanting to feel that. So I was ignoring it. But whenever I walked there and I didn't feel anything, I turned around. I'm like, this is BS. Like, how are you guys feeling stuff? And I'm not. And as soon as I said that, it felt like somebody took a baseball bat right to the back of my skull. Like right there is where you should be paying attention. And I doubled over in pain and I was like, okay, got it. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. Ask, yeah. Be careful what you ask for. It. Yeah, that's but, right. Yeah, it, I didn't realize that that was like an actual like right there. I mean, I, I, I took it as pay attention, but I didn't realize the significance behind that's that. That's a place. huge portal, right? That base of your spine. And again, that's why people don't realize why we do things like if whatever your version of prayer is, why would you bow your head? It's not so you look down; it's so you open that. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Um, one thing that I wanted to ask you is, um, as far as investigations go, do you see, um, any merits toward going to a place where you don't know any history of it? Like you said, Zach has done with you. He doesn't tell you where you're going versus 
knowing a complete history before going into an area, how does that affect your experiences? With with me, I don't, as a rule, don't want to know. I don't want to be colored by, I don't want to worry that I'm throwing it over to my left logical brain about anything. If I don't know, then whatever I get is whatever I get. That's why right. I even didn't, when we went into the Cecil, I never focused on the Alyssa Lamb stuff. I just said, like, spirit, mm. take me somewhere. I just know there was a girl in the water tower. I don't need to go there. Um, right. So, but I, I think it's, I think like if you're on a team investigation should have both. I think you should have, maybe it's one of your tech people or one of your more people keep track of things that yeah. you know the whole history of, oh yeah, this basement is where this happens. Let's go there. This is what this happens. But if you're having, you're more intuitive or you're medium on your team or you're sensitive or your sensitives plural, um, it's not bad for at least one person to, to not know anything to see what they get. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That makes sense. That's what I've been telling the guys on my team to not tell me anything yeah. about any place. Right. right. And, and again, then yeah. you, what you get is going to be real and then get, just get out of your own way. That's the hard part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Cause there's also been times where something has happened and it's almost unbelievable. The, whatever you've seen or experienced and you're like, how did that, I don't, I don't know how this is happening right now, even in the moment. I'm like, what is happening? Um, and it's good to, it's good to have extra people there too, uh, to help verify some of that sometimes. Yeah. But it, yeah. It is. That's I what I, I like because I'm not an, I'm not a tech girl. I'm not an equipment girl. My biggest equipment, you know, dowsing rods in my hand, you know, that's it. Mm -hmm. Maybe if, if I want something that shows signs, but what's fun, you know, starting working with like the tech, it's like, cause my whole life I've been like, okay, well, there's a spirit on the table and he's going kick left, kick left, kick left, kick left. But they just have to take my word for it. Now, right. Billy or Aaron or somebody's in the other room with an SLS camera and there's a little green stick person doing that exact <laughs> kick left. Kick left. I'm like, yeah, that, you know, and we're, separate. <laughs> we're separate. Nobody knows what's going on. I just love that confirmation of it. It's mm -hmm. like through technology, it's all matching up. And that's yeah. Cool. Yeah. We've oh, actually, we've had instances where people, um, we, we saw something that was odd. And then the next location that we go to someone that's there to, to mm -hmm. like, that works there, uh, this last time at the jail, <laughs> the woman that worked there said, you know, it's odd. I had a dream last night about you guys coming and I never have a dream about work. I never have a dream about this building, but in the dream, and she goes to recount something that happened and it involved a very small, like three foot tall spirit or whatever, walking around and it had really bothered her. And it was just funny because the very last place that we went to, which was at Madison, we ran into that thing and it really put us through a loop. And um, for her to have that dream when we hadn't communicated with her at all. And so then when she finished telling us her dream, we're like, well, actually, we already dealt with that before and she just, she got chills and um, it, it's, it's cool when you get that confirmation. Yeah. And it shows that, there, you know, there's not time and space on the other side. It's, it's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's also been times where we've had um, not, I haven't experienced this, but I've heard of other people experiencing where, whether it's through like a spirit box um, or the uh, phasma box or whatever, a spirit from one area coming through mm. the one that they've only ever encountered in one building is coming through to them in a completely different location. Um, and it's mind boggling to, to think of that because we're so used to our human plane that we see. Yeah. That, mm. yeah. Yeah. That's yeah cool. it, is, it is mind boggling that I love being mm. mind boggled all the time. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Now I can't remember Heather when when we were both there doing the investigation. I know that both of us were on the um the spirit boxes. Now because when I go into something like that, I don't have a memory of it. I right. I'm I listen and I say whatever and then after the session is done, I really I don't know why I can't remember what happened, but I don't. And mm -hmm. I think 
didn't didn't something happen to where I said something and you said something almost like you and I were talking to one another even though we were in separate rooms yeah or yeah that that happened with us and um I think I think that happened the one time we were on separate floors and then it happened recently too with Travis and I did the same thing in, in two different areas and it oh, the wow, other okay. people that were listening it was a conversation somehow like we were feeding off of each other I guess um, and I don't really remember, like you, yeah, I don't remember too much when I'm, when I'm doing the Estes thing, I might remember certain words and then I'll ask right. later, what was that about? <laughs> and then they'll, <laughs> right, you know, exactly. they'll, they'll say what they, cause I don't know what they're asking or anything, but, um, what? yeah. Yeah. What I don't remember is that memory loss. Not memory loss. It's cause you're, you're in a form of a trance state, whatever. It's all right brain. It's not, you're putting your logic into it. Mm-hmm. That's I, I hard. Okay. I don't remember hardly anybody. Even if I'm doing a deep session with somebody the next day, would you talk about? I don't know. You know, it's, and it's not like I uh-huh. forgot. It. it was just like channeled through. When I right. when I see stuff on TV, it's like yeah, I'm watching it for the first time. It's like, huh, right, I don't right. <laughs> you know, a little moment, like you said, a word, because that was your conscious head step in and said, "Oh, let's do this," right. or "Well, my thing." That's the yeah. part that your consciousness, like, oh, how do you say that body part? I remembered that. But yeah, the, the rest of it, when you're just the channel or it's from spirit. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Because, yeah, I was always curious about that, thinking, well, gosh, what's happening? I don't understand this. But now I do. So thank you. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was wondering sometimes if we didn't tune into, because the, the, main idea behind it is something like the SS method is that you're hearing communication, you know, they're asking and then you're being the vessel through which they communicate. But based on what happened last time, I, I wonder if sometimes we're not also tuning into like a, a movie reel that we're just watching um, because of just the, the, the context of something like, I think at one point they told me, I said, what's with the body on the floor or, you know, whatever. <laughs> and then he said from the other room, it's buried under the floor. Right? I mean, but, and then where I, I, I could hear uh, like a chanting and I, I remember the, the only way I could describe it as I'm like, it sounds like somebody's saying a prayer, like a, like a preacher is just, just spouting off something. And then he would hear it too, but it, it was almost when, when they recounted back what he was saying and then the feelings that I felt too, I felt like, we were just watching it instead of them communicating through us necessarily. It's just, here's the scene that's playing out before me. That (laughs) that could be, because that's residual. You get that a lot. You know, like the lady Mm -hmm. in white that walks by every hour where she died on her way. That that poor ghost doesn't do that. It's like like video. It's like something so strong happened. It just Mm -hmm. like poured the thing. And it's that they're, it's just, it's exactly that. It's like video. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, I have one last question for you. I am curious, what is your earliest magical memory? Oh, what a great question. I think it is either a, it's either a cross between um what my little playmate that I in looking back the little guy the little one the little playmate that my imaginary friends that I knew weren't imaginary and they were mm. also little and now I'm going wow were those like aliens or something I don't know were they little <laughs> monsters? I think that that not understanding that everybody didn't have that or, mm. or I'm going to even lean more towards that just my in connection with nature even though I lived in a suburban mm. typical track house in Long Beach me just knowing that if I just got this rosemary off the plant and, and the mint and stuffed it in my mom's wallet, that it would give her more money. And <laughs> knowing that, I mean, she didn't quite appreciate wow. or get that. Why are you stuffing this stuff in my <laughs> like, Money, mom. And, you know, and then years oh. later, you're studying all this stuff and like, yeah, it does. <laughs> so oh, I, think that, I love that. <laughs> that's it. Just that. Just trust, trusting what's in the blood you know, just right. trusting that knowledge that we do have. Right. Oh, wow. 
Well, gosh, thank you so much. It has been a wonderful time with you. I cannot thank you enough for coming on with us. Um, if you could let everybody know where they can find you. Um, everywhere. Bathroom walls. Across. No, um, my, my <laughs> website is pattynegri.com, P-A-T-T-I-N-E-G-R-I.com. From that, of course, all the social medias, please like me, follow a Patty Negri Psychic Medium on Facebook, Patty.Negri on Instagram, at Patty Negri on Twitter. I do have a YouTube page where I actually teach a few things. Um, I teach, again, I have a newsletter. You can sign up on my website. I teach about twice a week now i teach for house of intuition on thursdays a ten dollar class i don't want that anybody can't afford to do anything that they want to learn to do so i have a right. little ten dollar class and then the longer more in-depth one on, with haunted diary i love working with nick on yeah. usually sundays so uh yeah pattynegri.com and from there it's just a big old like octopus <laughs> <laughs> wonderful and, and oh, thank done. you so much thank you and my book old world magic for the modern world you can get that on amazon or a link on my website and um, awesome. just makes you look a little bit happier. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yay. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. You guys are great hosts. Really fun. So oh. thank you for having me on. Thank oh, you for taking time you. to talk to us. Yes, oh. for sure. <laughs>
You are currently listening to a podcast on the Age of Radio podcast network, Age of Radioverse, the podcast network for everyone. If you enjoy this podcast, then you may enjoy one of the other podcasts part of Age of Radioverse. You can see them all at ageofradio.org. If you like true crime, check out Mysterious Circumstances, a podcast that deep dives into the unsolved and interesting with an unpolished and unscripted pirate radio sound. If you like a conversational style podcast with mysterious stuff, you'll love it. If you like the paranormal, then check out our Dark Windows. Dark Windows is hosted by two Kevins, and they are just two enthusiastic idiots talking about the paranormal, cryptids, serial killers, and the darker side of history. Maybe true crime and the paranormal aren't your thing or you want to branch out? Then maybe try What Were They Thinking, where Nathan and Brendan discuss truly awful movies while trying to keep their sanity intact. There is something for everyone on Age of Radioverse, the Age of Radio podcast network. Find your next favorite podcast at ageofradio.org. Once again, that's ageofradio.org. Happy listening.